Hey guys, how are you? Jamie Frazier here today with Adirondack Mountain and Stream. And uh, we actually have a guest here today at the shop, Todd Waldron, who's a friend of mine and actually a family member. <laughs> They're not going to hold it against you, buddy. And, uh, but uh, he is, he's affiliated with um, East to West Coast Podcast, which you may have seen if you follow any of that kind of stuff. And then also BHA, uh, Organization for Hunters and Anglers and Backcountry Travelers. So if you would, Todd, maybe, um, maybe just kind of tell some of our viewers just how some of these, these uh, your organizations and your podcasts, how it kind of helps contribute or, or what you're just trying to do with it all and how important it is to the future of the great outdoors. Yeah, I'd love to, Jamie. So first off, I want to thank you for having me oh, up no, today no, to no, talk no. about this. Yeah. And I'm just going to say that for, um, so my name is Todd Waldron and uh, I'm a volunteer for Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. I'm a life member. Backcountry Hunters and Anglers is a conservation group based out of Missoula, Montana. Mm -hmm. um, they're the fastest growing conservation group in North America oh, right wow. now. Yeah. And, um, and we have a chapter in New York. I've been involved since 2016 with that chapter. And it's growing at fever pitch. You have young people that mm -hmm. want to get involved, that want to speak up for public land. So it's a great organization to be involved with. And that's all volunteer stuff for me. Um, and it really resonated with me. Like um, I, I came across Backcountry Hunters and Anglers when I went to the Rendezvous in Missoula uh -huh. in 2016. And uh, the message that they promote that uh, America's public lands are important. Um, as Americans, we have 640 million acres of public lands that belong to all of us, mm -hmm. right? So even if you don't hunt or fish, even if you might not be able to get to Wyoming or Montana to use those, mm -hmm. maybe your kids can, you know? And, and even if it's not a utilitarian thing, um, those public lands provide numerous conservation benefits for all Americans. Clean water, you know, watersheds um, that, that municipalities use for drinking water, you know, they originate on public lands on high elevation forest service lands. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just the open space and the wilderness and the quality, um, you know, the habitat and everything like that. So beyond just the, the, the utilitarian use of being able to enjoy it, which right. we all can, whether you are a bus driver or, you know, a banker, um, you know, there's important conservation benefits to that. And the, the other reason that I feel um, conservation is important is because, you know, it's a long-term thing and, and wildlife and future generations can't speak for themselves. It's up right. to us, you know. Right, like right. hunting has created a great lifestyle for us, right? Oh, without a doubt. And yeah. many memories and many, many great opportunities and it's a privilege um, to be able to do it. And so with that privilege, you know, you have this opportunity to give back a little bit. Right, and, right. And, um, and you look at the history of hunters and anglers, mm -hmm. um, that they, they've always given back in North America. You look at the North American conservation model, it's funded by hunting and angling money through licenses, mm -hmm. through excise taxes like Pittman Robertson and Dingle mm -hmm. Johnson. Um, our public lands are funded by the Land and Water Conservation Fund, mm -hmm. which doesn't cost you or me a penny. It's mm -hmm. like an excise tax on offshore gas. Uh, it was permanently reauthorized. Um, it, it provides millions of dollars a year. It's been intact in since like 1965. Um, groups like Backcountry Hunters and Anglers have been working to, to make sure that that important funding is in place. Mm -hmm. um, and it finally got permanently reauthorized this year. So, you know, there's this... You know, there's this opportunity for conservation to mm -hmm. to be able to perpetuate what we do, right? Mm -hmm. And so, with that, um, you know, comes this opportunity to get involved with great groups like BHA. Mm -hmm. uh, it's fun, and and beyond all the important stuff, I'm just going to say it's a, it's an incredible group of people. Mm -hmm. Like um, our chapter, we have about 800 members in New York, mm -hmm. and every single pe person I meet, like through BHA, it's like mm -hmm. I'm impressed with their passion for the outdoors, mm -hmm. for their commitment to step up and do whatever they need to to be a good mm -hmm. ambassador for hunting and fishing. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of fun. You know, well, I think that's just it too. Getting being around other outdoor people, people with common interests, it just it, it'd be a definite reason to join. You're just, you're just meeting other people that have you know like passions and everything. So yeah, I mean that that's a definite big deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, versus you know just uh, people that don't want to be involved. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, and I and that was a real good point you brought up there. I know that's a lot of numbers and a lot of whatever. And, and um, yeah, you did a great job with that. But it's uh, also just. When you think about our kids and the future, whether it's our kids or other kids, and, and well, like I say, they can't speak for themselves. And I think a lot of people kind of tend to forget that. Yep. That, you know, this is, it's not just now, not just for us now, which is important, but it's, it's the future generations of, of, uh, of a lot of our young people so that they're going to be able to enjoy the great outdoors. That's right. It's, it's well said, Jamie. And I would also say that, 
you know, we're at this kind of crossroads right now with hunting and angling and participation numbers. So um, there's about 12 to 14 million hunters in the United States across mm -hmm. the country and something like 30 to 40 million um, of anglers, right. right? So over the last decade or so, you know, we've kind of started this transition where hunters and anglers, people like you and me, mm -hmm. we're going to be aging out of that over the next couple of decades eventually. Right. We hope not, right? We I hope not. to be doing it until I'm 90. <laughs> but, but what's happening is hunting and angling numbers are going to start kind of transitioning with our generation. Mm -hmm. And so there's a couple of things there. So um, one, it's important in order for North American conservation to work right now with the way the funding works mm -hmm. it needs to be supported by hunting and angling dollars. Right. So if we lose hunters and anglers, you know, we lose funding as it's modeled right now. So right. that's an issue because then everybody loses, right? right. Because, right. You, right. you know, it's not just hunting and angling. It's, right. it's all the ecosystem services and everything else. Right. Um, so it's important. And, and I would also say that like for, for new hunters and anglers, like being involved with not only kids that we're trying to get into mm -hmm. the next generation of hunting and angling, but adult onset hunters, people mm -hmm. that want to connect with wild food and wild places, people that just want to learn something new and say, hey, I like the outdoors. I'm interested in responsible food. I'm interested in like a, a mindful connection to that. So one of the first things they're going to say is like it's hard if I'm 40 and I live in Brooklyn and mm -hmm. I and I've never hunted. Mm -hmm. I don't know where to get started. So people like you mm -hmm. with Adirondack Mountain Stream Guide Service can be an incredible resource for them. Mm -hmm. um, organizations like Backcountry Hunters and Anglers that are um, promoting places to hunt. You know, mm -hmm. one of the biggest things they're going to say is I don't know where to hunt or I don't mm -hmm. have a place to hunt. Mm -hmm. So by keeping public lands in place. They have a place to hunt. Right, right, right. You know, so that's the foundation is like um, in order for that whole thing to move forward, you need the baseline of quality habitat, mm -hmm. lots of access and places to hunt, people like yourself right. who are um, able to help. Yeah, well, you know, I don't know, we're going on over 35 years I've been in the guiding industry. And, and, and so when you mentioned that about the people, I feel that we're getting more and more calls all the time on people who just want to get introduced to it, <clears throat> they didn't grow up with it. And now all of a sudden they're in their 30s and 40s. And I think now we've got a generation or two of people that maybe dad didn't do it. Everybody mm -hmm. thinks, you know, my, my grandfather did do it and, and they kind of learned from that. That's not happening all the time anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so as like, like guys like us, we are trying to do more workshops and stuff like that to help get sportsmen and outdoor people introduced. And so I, I, I think all these things, it just gets the right kind of people together and gets them thinking about all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's just it. We can, get, we can get so caught up in our own little world that we forget that a lot of this is important and how, whatever. So, no, it's a great great organization. I'm so glad you're able to come today, Todd. Uh, we, could, we could go on and on. But um, thanks, thanks so much for stopping by, folks. And uh, thanks so much. Thanks for viewing. We'll catch you next time.